All right, so we have the basic implementation of React query in our app. So again, I missed one thing from the last video. I did not actually show you what the application looked like after we added use query to this application. So it's not going to look that different because the application is essentially the same. We have just changed the data fetching logic, but still I'll show it to you. So this is what it looks like again, the same, but this time it's a different route. It's not without query, it's with query. Now let's actually install one more library called react query dev tools. This is going to help us debug the application a lot better. Again, pnpm add and stack react query dev tools. This is not a Chrome extension. This is actually a library and you are going to inject the dev tools as a react component inside your application. You also need not worry about whether this component is also going to be added in the production build. React query handles it internally and excludes it in the production. So inside the main.jsx file, I'll import the React query dev tools and right below the router provider, I'll attach the dev tools component. Now inside the browser, you'll see this new block. This is the dev tools block and we are going to use this more than our typical Chrome dev tools to debug things related to React query. So at the top here, we have queries and mutations. You already looked at what a query is. Any query that you subscribe to will be shown in this section. You can already see that we have a post query logged inside this query section. But there's one more core concept that we'll be taking a look at later, which is mutations. So if we are dealing with fetching data from the server, we'll be using queries. If I want to modify something on the server, I'll go for mutations. Again, I'll come back to this in the later part of the series. You can see a bunch of states here at the top. So a fresh state ideally is when the data was just fetched. In normal applications that do not use react query or any other caching mechanism, the data is almost never fresh. Like for instance, say I have a home page and a profile page, both make an API call to fetch data specific to those pages. Now, if I switch between these pages 10 times in like a minute, each time I switch, there will be a new API call for that particular page. Even though the data might not have been updated, the API call is still made because there is no caching in place. In this scenario, the data fetched is straight away considered as stale. So any subsequent visit on the page will trigger an API call considering the fact that the data is old and stale and not up to date. In the coming videos, we'll see how we can tweak the stale time so that the data fetched from a query remains in cache for a longer period of time and we can reuse the same data without making unnecessary API calls. Then there's the fetching state that tracks when a query is actually fetching the data. Then finally, we have the inactive state. So basically inactive queries are queries that are not currently being used by any component. These queries will be automatically garbage collected after a certain time to free up memory. The current default I believe is five minutes, but you can tweak that as well. You have options to filter or sort queries if there are many in your application. If I click on the query here, you can find a lot of details related to the query along with some actions. There's the data explorer that gives you the data fetched from the backend and then store in the cache. You can manipulate this data, but again, it's locally stored. So a refresh or a refetch will reset it. If I just go to the first piece of data, the first post here, I can update the title and just check what it looks like. But again, this is local, so it's not really making any changes to the server. If I just reset this, it's going to go back to its original state. The query explorer gives you the query along with all its parameters that were responsible for fetching this data. At the top, we have the state of the data that was fetched using the query. So it's stale right now which means it will be refetched anytime this component unmounts and remounts in the future. So if I switch between two routes, this is going to make an API call. The query is being used by one component. So we only see one observer here. You can also simulate some actions here in the query. Refetch will refetch the data, essentially making an API call. So let me just bring back the network tab from Chrome DevTools and if I click on refetch, you see that the post request was made again. Invalidating is very similar to refetching. 
you are invalidating the data present inside the cache. You normally do this when you made some changes to the backend and you now know that the data sitting in the cache is outdated. You invalidate it and React Query makes a refetch to update the cache. So if I click on this, it's basically going to trigger one more fetch call. Now reset allows you to reset the entire state of your queries and mutations. You can think of it like a page reload. Remove will simply remove the query from the cache. So if I click on this, you won't see the post query anymore. I had to reload this and only then we'll see the post query back inside this section. These two states that we see here are basically going to simulate a loading or an error state. So if I click on trigger loading, it's going to simulate a loading state. If I click on trigger error, it's going to simulate an error state. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the DevTools has to offer and we'll use this extensively to debug our queries in the coming videos. So do subscribe for that and I'll see you in the next one.